Recently, I had to become much better acquainted with the Fair Use Doctrine after our channel was issued a DMCA takedown notice for one of our review videos. Here's what happened. On February the 10th, I uploaded a video where I reviewed the installation of a horizontal privacy fence by Home Rental Vision DIY. On March the 2nd, I received a copyright takedown notice from YouTube saying that Michelle Thorman, who is associated with Home Rental Vision DIY, I believe she's Jeff's wife, had issued a copyright takedown notice saying that we had illegally used their copyrighted material and that YouTube had to take it down immediately. And they did. The email from YouTube was very clear that the video was taken down immediately, and if they received more copyright strikes, our channel as a whole could be removed. Needless to say, slight panic ensued. I reviewed the fair use doctrine within the DMCA, confirming that the video did in fact meet their guidelines. I then emailed Home Renovation DIY directly via the email address provided on their YouTube page. I tried to resolve this directly. After about a week of not hearing back from Jeff or Michelle at Home and Revision DIY, I had to file a legal counter notice with YouTube, letting them know that, yes, this video does in fact meet the fair use doctrine within the DMCA and that the video should be reinstated. The process then goes that YouTube waits 10 to 14 days to see if Home Renovision DIY were going to file a federal lawsuit in U.S. federal courts to permanently remove the video, which they didn't. After that waiting period and the lack of a federal lawsuit, YouTube then reinstated the video. Unfortunately, at that point, the damage had already been done. The video had been taken down for almost a month. And since then, the video simply hasn't performed very well. So we're uploading the video in its entirety with this quick explainer beforehand to let you guys know why it's getting re-uploaded and what exactly happened. Why Homeroom Division DIY tried to take down the video and almost take down our channel. So, without further ado, here's the video in its entirety. What is up, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we've got the latest in the Positive Reaction video series. It's a series where Jeremy goes out into the YouTube wonderland and finds fencing videos that he thinks that I'll positively react to and that I would like to share with you guys. With all that being said, let's both watch this for the first time. All right, guys, today's video is titled How to Build a Horizontal Fence DIY. The channel is Home Renovision DIY. It's an interesting subject. It's a question I get a lot specifically about horizontal fences. Uh, as the time goes on, these, these fence styles are becoming more and more popular. So I'm interested to see how Home Renovision does it. We're gonna be using traditionally a five quarter inch by six inch lumber going horizontal across the fence. Around eye level, we're gonna use a two by six just to have a little bit of texture and some pop. The way we're attaching our fence to our fence post is real simple. We're using the camo screw system, which is awesome because it comes in at an angle just off the rounded edge of the wood, and it keeps the surface screws out of the visibility. All right, so that's interesting. So he's using a five-quarter board, um, which is similar to how we would do it. So when we when we build horizontal boards, I like to use two-by material, two-by-six or two-by-eight, uh, maybe some two-by-four to kind of throw in a little bit of variety. But uh, five-quarter in the lumber industry is a nice quality board. One area that we differ in is, I would guess this is probably like an eight foot tall fence or maybe even taller. Uh, we would definitely use a steel post. The problem with wood post is, and these look like treated pine posts, you can buy number one clear grade, which is one of the highest grades of lumber you can buy. Um, you could buy that in treated pine and you still end up with warping and twisting to some extent. So uh, for as much time and efforts to going into this, a steel post upgrade might have been uh, called for, but that would leave. So he's getting ready. It looks like he's getting ready to describe a, um, it's a hidden hidden fastener system. In the fencing industry, a lot of guys call this like toe nailing. Uh, he's using, looks from the illustration, looks like he's using screws, but uh, but with a wood post, you can't, can't use the hidden fastener system. Rounded edge of the wood, and it keeps the surface screws out of the visibility. And once they're buried, a couple of decent rains, the wood will swell up and grow over the screw hole and you'll never see another screw hole again. That'll allow this fence to last for about 20, 25 years before you start to see any signs of wear and should be more than enough for them to enjoy it for a lot of years to come. So this is the camo screwing system. I uh, saw this on the market a few years ago for the first time, but wasn't sure how it was gonna perform. Tried it out on some real simple deck surface type things and was pleased with the result it gave. A little more labor intensive than you might expect as far as the screwing down of the floor is concerned. 
but it definitely uh, outperforms a traditional surface screw so to such a huge degree that you can definitely ask the clients for additional you know uh, costs when you're doing this kind of a thing so yeah so you'd want to take that into account yeah he had, he kind of glossed over it there but you it sounds like it's going to take longer the camo system i've never used the camo system so i can't speak to it specifically uh, but it does seem like it take longer so you want to factor that if if you're a contractor bidding a job you'd want to factor additional labor into your proposal. I was down in Vegas two years ago at the trade show, international trade show for construction. And they had this demonstration. And so these guys from Camo were down there and they've been driving around this little piece of deck that they built with the Camo screws and they leave it outside the shop. And on this decking is half of it's done with the Camo screw, half of it's done with surface screw. And as you would guess, pressure treated lumber, when it has surface screws, every one of the areas where the screw is, starts to rot because when it rains it holds water there so it's excessive wear at the screw head penetration so that's one area that you know a fence is going to differ from a deck so i understand i understand the concept he's talking about on a flat board with screws it creates a dimple in the board that water can collect in uh, when we're talking about fence that's vertical i haven't seen this in fencing where it rots prematurely at the fastener where the fastener goes through the picket whether it's a screw or a nail so it might not be as much of a consideration on a fence uh, than on a deck. So the reason we do these videos is to help the do-it-yourselfers. So a lot of do-it-yourselfers don't have help around. So I'm going to show a lot of how to do it alone kind of tricks when you're working. So first of all, we're going to hang this first board, which I've already found with my level. It's the straightest board in the bunch. And I'm going to attach that to the fence. And I'm going to level off till it's perfect. Then I'm going to use a string line to create the line that I'm going to build the rest of the fence on. But in order to do this, I want to, it go, stretches over three posts. So we have a center mark, six feet, set a screw. And then all we got to do is walk over to the post and mount it. So when you're hanging a board, it's nice and simple. We're in the middle. We're going to create a simple lever. I'm going to mount that screw, take our level, set it on top of the board. And we're going to get a second screw here just to fix it. And we're really happy with our location. It's perfect. Now, if you come straight on that with the... That's a, that's a good tip. I um, mean, that way it allows one person to install and level the uh, the boards. Problem is now you've got two screw holes in your boards. I mean, obviously, he's probably going to back them out once the other two sides are attached and use the whichever system he's using, the camo system. Uh, but still, at the same time, it's still going to leave a couple uh, screw holes there in your the face of your boards which might defeat the purpose. Now that it's perfectly level, we're just going to tack in the other end. So now I'm taking some of this really nasty bright colored string and I'm going to run it all the way down. And the idea here is, is when you lift, it's just like doing a chalk line on a floor. So you've got a fixed point and the other point of that board, which is level, we're going to move this string until it's just Barely touching the top of that board. We're not going to be upset with that. that. That's a nice process. I like that. And it's another good illustration of a proper use of a string. T guys that use string a lot of times in a little bit less uh, less straightforward ways. I like this. That way the, the entire string is running down the length of the board and then proceeds past the board. So he knows that this string line, the top of the string line, is going to match the top of that rail across the length of the fence. The idea here is to try to find one level line, at least do a straight line, and then we're gonna stagger our joints, and that'll help us to keep things nice and tight and square, so that if we have a board that has a warp, it'll be easy to identify and we'll know where to fix it, instead of just slowly bending the whole fence up, which is what happens if you try to start here and work your way down. So now we've gotta get these boards installed, okay. So we set our posts approximately six feet apart. Approximately because we cheated, we intentionally made it just a couple inches shy. And the reason I did that is twofold. One, a lot of the times when you're buying the lumber for the fence, there'll be splits in the end of the board. And we didn't want to have that ugliness. So we wanted to have the ability to cut them down to make them pretty. So, and two, because we want to stagger our joints, we don't have the luxury of, of finding a post that's just a little bit off center as far as our, our midpoint on the hole. We're on a big slope, we know we're digging into clay, we might find rocks, there's a lot of variables. So by intentionally planting a little bit shy, we can sacrifice cutting the wood, lose a couple inches on every 12 foot board, 
It's not going to increase your cost of production that much, but it is going to give you a little bit of mercy room when you're building your fence so you don't run into a problem that you have to get creative problem solving and wreck it. So that's a good tip too. So instead of using like a six foot center to center, he went a little bit shy of that. A lot of times when you buy, when you're buying lumber, either six foot, eight foot, ten foot, whichever length, it, they're rarely all the same length. Some are six foot, some are five eleven, some are six two. Uh, so by shortening the distance of his post, he's making sure he's going to have to cut every two by four, but he's making sure that he's never going to have to go buy a longer two by four or two by six in this case. Uh, to fit his project. I also like that he did space the post six feet apart. In a six-foot privacy fence, you'd see them eight foot or less, which is the standard. Uh, but since it's a taller fence, he went ahead and spaced them six feet apart, giving this even more, you know, the wood posts giving them even more uh, structure. You, the more posts you have in the line of the fence, the stronger the fence is going to be. So our board to the center is 141 inches and a half. And you'll see at the end of the board usually takes a dark stain. Here I got an ugly knot. I got a sticker with a staple. All these things that I just don't want to have to contend with when I'm building my fence. Get a nice clean cut. Now one other thing that I know, I know that the end of this board is square. So it looks like just looking at this, it's, he's using a pre-stained lumber. You can tell that that end cut is quite a bit lighter color than the rest of the picket, so or rest of the board. I wonder if he's going to stain that edge to make sure that it's a completely stained board. Make sure that there's no areas for, you know, moisture to wick in. So we've marked off the position of our 4x4 posts. Like I mentioned, I just set the camo in there, lock it in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to free drill the hole. I can't remove the fastener. The reason being, these screws are very unique. They do not have a tip. They're just cut off with a, with a cutter on the an assembly line. And the reason for that is that this is a design to bore through the wood, come really ugly-like. And what that does is it keeps the wood from splitting. So when you're near the end of a piece of wood and you try to drive a regular screw, you'll find the wood will split on that screw line. So the trick for carpenters is we'd put the screw there and we'd go in reverse and drill it a little bit and then we go forward it won't split. But this screw is designed to get, eliminate that problem so I can drive the screw right on the edge. No problem. So before I put this board up, now that I've got the holes pre-drilled, I can drive it in easy. So that's interesting. I thought he was going to use that tool to actually install the screws in place. So he's using it before he mounts the board, pre-drilling it. Certainly one way to do it. And it probably makes it easier to mount, to be honest. So when you're working alone as a DIYer, you want to have these in place, pre-drilled, with the screws mounted, ready to go before you lift that board up. Because I'll tell you, when you get it in that sweet spot and you're right on that level string, you're gonna wanna drive that screw right away. You don't wanna hesitate. So here we go, we lift up our board. Let's get it flipped over. Now, this is not that tricky. Eyeball, we can find the top of that string. Here we are. We're gonna lift it right up to the top of the string here. There's my sweet spot. You know, I haven't used this, this system before, the, the camo system or the the hidden fastener system. I would wonder how strong that is. I mean, it, sound, it sounds like he's a carpenter, so he knows what he's doing. But just to a, to a guy that hasn't used this system, isn't familiar, it doesn't look like this would be as structurally sound as, you know, face fastening face fastening the screws through the, through the uh, board. So right now you're only grabbing the corner of that board. It'd make me wonder uh, how strong it is. I mean, with a deck, you're not worried about the boards peeling off. The deck or the deck boards are sitting on top of structure. Really, you're worried about them coming up or moving. Uh, with a fence, you're really worried about them. I mean, they've got vertical pressure pulling them down, along with horizontal pressure when the wind blows. I uh, wonder how how long term the solution would be. Of course, my screws all set and ready to go. Now, that gets buried on a 45 degree angle. We've already identified the crown of the wood, so this is not gonna be a problem. Our wood isn't gonna split around on us. You can see how the head is completely buried. So it looks like a lot of work getting it set up, but once it's set up, it goes in pretty quick. So the camo system is designed for deck boards. 
Our horizontal fence, because when you buy the lumber, it usually comes with too much moisture and it takes a few weeks to dry, it'll shrink a little bit on us, leaving some gaps. So we're doing both sides of our neighbor's fence line, so we're gonna adjust which side of the line goes where so that there's no direct line through, okay? But because of this, our ability to put the screw in in advance is diminished. So you just take a nail punch, give that screw somewhere to start, and then you can drive it in. Problem solved. So basically, in order to finish this fence, all we have to do is exactly the same thing we've just done 50 or 60 times, and we should be good. So uh, that concludes the information. Uh, make sure that you keep an eye out, subscribe to our channel. We're gonna have the whole project finished and you can watch it then. Uh, like us if you like us, share if you, if you like to share, and uh, we'll see you again soon. So that was an interesting video. It, was, it was kind of looked like it was actually just a setup video to a larger project. Uh, horizontal fences are, are a big deal right now in the fencing industry, and this is certainly one way to install it. Um, you'd want to decide for yourself. I'd want to research more into the screw system to see, you know, the strength of those screws, if they stand up to a vertical, you know, horizontal fence, a vertical standing fence, as opposed to just a horizontal deck. Um, but yeah, certainly one way to do it. Well, guys, I appreciate you tuning in to our most recent positive reaction video. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.